We finished off last week with the Chofetz Chaim. Right. And today we will continue. We're going to sharpen it up a little bit to the definitions and the parameters of... Um, I, I, I laid out for you, I think, last week, the landscape, sort of the three... Let's just do a quick Chazorah of that. There are three primary um, opinions in terms of what what is permitted or desirable to teach women and girls today. You have, we'll go from left to right, and left as in politically whatever, um, you have the opinion of um, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, the um, Rav Soloveitchik. Um, there's also a tshuva from um, Ramot Cheliyahu, actually, interestingly, also. In in, in, so I'm, going to, I'm about to, to, to explain. In terms of the permissibility or possibly even the desirability of teaching women Torah Shabal Peh. Okay. Exactly. Right? Um, and we're, we're going to need to look into that into a little bit, into a little bit more detail, in a, you know, a bit more depth. Then you have sort of the, for want of a better term again, but the probably the mainstream or yeshivish uh, um, opinion. When I say yeshivish, I mean the broad swathe of what we would call today the yeshiva world, the Haredi world, incorporating pretty much basically the Beis Yaakov movement. Yes? And that's on the basis of the Chofetz Chaim, in which <coughs> we saw the Chofetz Chaim, we saw the Chuba from Rav Moshe, that, and, I, and we'll give a little bit more detail as we go through it again today as well. <coughs> we do not teach women Torah Shabal Peh in the same way that we teach it to men and to boys. So we don't, we're not, we don't go into sugyas in Gemara in Halacha with the lomdas and all of the, the halachic uh, analysis, the, the, the deep analysis that um, underpins all of these ideas. On the other hand, when we teach, and we're going to see a bit more of a, it still needs more of a hagdara. It needs a, a clearer definition. And we'll come to that hopefully today as well. On the other hand, we do teach them when we teach Torah Shabbich Sav, we do so inside. We teach Rashi inside. We can teach Mephorshim inside. And um, yeah, that's basically the main... The, but we don't teach Mishnayas and Gemara. There will not be... You will not find in a mainstream Beis Yaakov um, Mishnayas classes or Gemara classes. How about, how about Kabbalah? <laughs> Are you, was that a serious question? No, Not really. You can, you can, you can put it well, when you put it this way, when you have Kabbalah classes for the boys, then you can ask a, a, a question about whether we have Kabbalah classes for the girls. Oh. Oh. Ah. Do you find Kabbalah classes for boys in yeshiva? No, I mean, I, I'm not saying like Kabbalah in the... So what, so sorry, like so what a, did like you a, mean? Like a shia, which is Kabbalah influence, maybe, like something which is... You're going to have to be a little bit more... I mean, you can pack Kabbalah differently. You can do like, yeah, but you Before you go to, you know, sort of right to the left of field, why didn't why don't you ask um, deeper machshava? Yeah. Maral. Okay. Um, yeah, 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 that's what I mean. uh, that, that, which contains uh, Kabbalistic yeah. uh, concepts within it. So that, I think, is, um, again, there are, That's what I meant. there are different, yeah, okay, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry maybe, I mis- no, no, maybe I misunderstood you, what, what, uh, Mashava, well, that's a deep, Mashava, Reb Desla, Reb Desla right. is very heavily based on Tanya, uh, Reb Tzadok, and, and, uh, those sort of sources, which do contain Kabbalistic ideas, very much so. Mm-hmm. Um, so, in Sem's, in mainstream yeshivish Sem's, they do, they are taught, Right. And then some of them, it's, it becomes quite academic. Michlala, and I, mean, I don't want to mention any names. And there, there is a bit of a, 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 a range within the, within the spectrum. And we need to understand, it's actually a good point, we need to understand how that fits in to the Chofetz Chaim's Eislas, Eislas Shem, to the Heiras Shah. And we, we need to do that as well. Mm-hmm. Okay? And then you have on the, on the right, which we haven't seen yet inside, which we will see a little bit inside, which is more the Hungarian, for want of a better term, the Hungarian uh, um, Poiskim and those Hasidic um, Kreis and those, uh, those groups that identify very heavily with that. They do teach their kid, the, the girls, Chumish, but they will not teach them Rashi inside. They will teach them the ideas, 
um, they will they will be okay with them reading various svarim such as Tzena Rena, Menorah Samoir, which contain Mamore Chazal and Midrashim and Gemaras, but not learning them inside. So they so that is the range, that is the spectrum. I've sketched it out. Let's drill down a little bit more into some of the detail. We're going to start this this morning with Rav, a comment from Rav Hirsch on it's on page one, the bottom of page one on the pasuk. <laughs> says Rav Hirsch, Limud Makif, it says Vilimadatem. Says Rav Hirsch, Limud Makif Yoisa Mercher Shinon. Now, presumably he wrote this in Hoch Deutsch, not in Hebrew, but uh, this is the, the Rav Hirsch in Hebrew. So, the word Limud um, encompasses more than the word Shinon. Remember, we had Vashinantam Levonecha, right? Limud is more than Shinon. Rav Hirsch identifies Shinon. Remember that word Shinon, which is where the word Mishnah comes from? It means to repeat. Um, it means to have recall of the halacha at your fingertips. That would um, suggest, says Rav Hirsch, short sentences which capture the essence and the basic halachas of a Torah idea or of a, or of a concept. So, limud is deeper than that. Now we can understand, says Rav Hirsch, why the Gemara eliminates or excludes women from limud at Torah, does so from the posseg v'li madatem, but does not do so from the posseg of v'shinantam. Why? Because the, the halacha v'li madatem halacha zu poiteres esa'av milalamed is bitoi Torah. It, it exempts the father from teaching his daughter Torah. Achi nil medas miloshin v'li madatem. But what is the posit from which we learn that the exemption that you don't need to teach your daughter Torah? It's from v'li madatem. V'loi miloshin v'shinantom levanecha. In the v'shinantom, Rav Hirsch is of the opinion that girls are included. Shekein ho'av potu rak minachoi v'lahaknois Lebitoi lamdonus shel A father is exempt from. He does not have a duty to teach his daughter to be a lamdon. That's that's what goes out the window. Ki hatafkid liknois velimsoyres mada hatayra mutal al ish yehudi. The there is we have a religious obligation to be lamdonim. You know it's fascinating the the. If we get time, we'll see also the Hakdama of the Beis Halevi in the Truva Beis Halevi. It's a very important piece we didn't do yet. I alluded to it. I think I may have mentioned this to you before. What is the biggest insult? I mean, certainly in the religious world. What is the biggest insult? Oh. That's it. <laughs> the biggest insult, I, in my book anyway, I think is Amoretz. Not we shouldn't insult anybody, obviously, but <laughs> but the the the, the concept of not about blame, not about being judgmental. The biggest tragedy, let's let's rephrase it. The biggest tragedy for a Jew, for a male Jew, is to be an Amoritz. There's no greater tragedy than a Yid whose neshama is yearning for the nourishment of Torah, which sustains, which sustains him. And for whatever reason, he has no access to that. That's, he's an Amoritz. For us, that is the, that is the greatest tragedy. It's a much better word. Yeah? But for a girl, that's not a tragedy. And when we say Torah, that means the more that you are in tune uh, with the, the depth and the brilliance and the beauty, the majesty, the grandeur, the infinity of Torah, that the more your soul sings. That's how you dovuk to the Rabbeinu Shalom. That is not the tachlis of a woman, and therefore a father is potter. Ki hatavki ligna yisalim saris madah hatayim mutalat ish yehudi. Ulam oisa havona shel safris hayahadus. <laughs> but the basic understanding of, interesting, he uses a, a language here, I don't know how it translates from the, the Hochdeutsch, it would be interesting for you guys maybe to look this up in the original, I'd be quite interested if you could do this please, uh, when you get a chance, yeah, Devarim, 11.19, you'd have a few tests, have a look at Rav Deutsch in the original, uh, Rav Deutsch. <laughs> <laughs> have a look at, I'm overtired, I'm sorry, have a look at Rav Hirsch in the original, and let me know, I'd be, be really interesting to see this. Okay, admittedly, this is into the Lashon HaKodesh, but it says the, 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 the understanding of Safrus Hayahadus. I don't want to translate it as Jewish literature because that's, uh, that, that has the wrong connotation. 
But the idea of the mitzvahs of Hadrusho Kdei Lekayim V'yoru Es Hashem Lekeichem V'shomru Lasis Es Kol Divrei Atayra Azois But the idea of having um, a, 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 a reverence a kavod, and the, this is something I want to talk about in a second. That also yesh lahakdis livnei senu loy pochus me'ashel avonenu. Let me try and put this in different words, and I think this is absolutely in consonance. Of course, Rav Hirsch came first, but with what the Chafetz Chaim is saying. Let's take an example. So I'll take a personal example. Um, I have a daughter who's quite bright. Baruch Hashem. Um, <coughs> These things happen. <laughs> um, and she she did a science degree, sort of on her own. Imagine if her perspective on Torah would have been, she's doing a science degree, right? So she's aware of, she has an academic level, when you, you know, she's in biology, private, majored in biology, then you see the the... <laughs> The, the level of academic knowledge is, is pretty intense. And imagine if that would have been matched with an infantile appreciation of Torah. Mm. Right. Then what it actually would have, the, 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 the consequence, chas v'shalom, would have been, and Rav Hirsch is spelling it out very beautifully. He's saying the consequence would have been, there would have been no, v'yoru es Hashem aleikeichem v'shomru lasis es kol divri atayra there would have been no appreciation of the awesome nature, the depth, the brilliance, the beauty of Torah that would match, to give it a respect, an awe, a reverence. And this fits in with what we said from Rabbi Chaim about Bechaz Torah. Remember, it's a Shabbat Chabon, we call it Amim. Wow. It's a Bechaz Shabbat. Shabbat for something that is worthy of Shabbat. Not something that is infantile, not something that is, that is superficial, that is one dimensional, that doesn't have the, the genius, the, bre- the breadth, the brilliance, the beauty. It is, to, it is to cultivate the approach and attitude. It's not for the purpose of the limud itself, of the data. That's irrelevant. Because the, the, other than a, a, a chiv to know how to keep halacha, which theoretically, as we saw from the Maharil, remember? All the way back from the Maril, you can get it from your parents. You can, you can, you can absorb it by osmosis. You, can, you don't have to even have that, that knowledge, or the, certainly not the understanding. <laughs> but what you do need to have, and it's exactly what the Chafetz Chaim was saying, and this is the key point, that in order for, our, for, for the women to have the ability to instill in themselves and in the next generations the... Yira, the respect, the covet for Torah as being something incredible and special and beautiful and brilliant, that they will then transmit that. That is the context. And they will transmit that, the Yira Shamayim, the Kedusha. In order to have that, you have to have an appreciation of it. And if you know nothing about it, or if your your knowledge of it is 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 childish, especially when it then gets compared to the degree in psychology you've got, or in medicine, or in law, or whatever, Lahavdil, and then you you say, well, I can see Chochmah there. I, I, I've never been exposed to any Chochmah in Torah. That's the problem. We have to rectify that and make a level playing field. But what is the purpose of it? The purpose of it is not, and this is where we do not, well, the Yeshiva Shavuot does not accept the more modern orthodox thing where it is for the sake of the knowledge. Mm-hmm. So that we should have Talmidot Chachamot or Yoatzot or Poskot or whatever, Rabot or Rabba, whatever the, the latest term is. That's, this is where the Yeshiva Shavuot, this is where we diverge. This is where I believe Rav Hirsch would be more sympathetic to this. The, the idea that Svek is that they should have a deep respect and appreciation, a, a, a kovoid, um, an awareness of how awesome, how unbelievable how Torah is, and it's Torah Sashem, and treat it, and then be able to help transmit it. And this Rav Hirsch says in his beautiful, inimitable style. And for that, he says, women, of course, the Vashinantov, that they are no less involved than than um, than boys. So um, yes. So we're saying that um, the vehicle to this covet and this appreciation is not exclusively Gemara. Correct. So correct. And, and this and, and this is, I think, the I think experience bears this out. Right. You can you 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 don't need to 
go into a deep... It, it definitely would have been one way of doing it. Right. But the Chofetz Chaim, and this is, you're getting, you're pushing me already. You're pushing me already. You know, let me throw this out in case, let me just throw this out as a, we need to have a, a halachic hagdara. We need to have a definition. So the Chofetz Chaim said, this is a hoira asha, this is where we're at. And what is the Chofetz Chaim saying? Is the Chofetz Chaim saying that the Isur, that we take that Seif and Shulchan Aruch and we throw it out? Is that what he's saying? Can't be. So what is he really saying? Us as men need to have a, a clearer Hagdara. What? We know the why. We've got the why. We know why he said it. He said it very eloquently, very passionately. The Rav Hirsch also. We know why. We get that. So, but what? we need a little bit more Londisher definition of the what. And this, it seems, perhaps is the understanding of the differences of opinion between the Hasidish world, the on the right, so to speak, and the, the more modern Orthodox world on the left, and um, and where we stand in the middle, so to speak. Well, I say we because I count myself as in this middle group. But And actually, the more I think about this, let me throw out an idea. For you. This is, first of all, this is just an idea. I'll try and evidence it. I don't know if we'll get through all the evidence today. I'll try and evidence it. And I think this is my understanding of how this really works. It's about culture. I'll explain what I mean. This, I, I hope this is not too radical. Think about the level of trust. Trust and respect that is present in these three subsets within Yiddishkeit, within orthodoxy. Modern orthodoxy, yeshiva world, and I'm going to say satma, but the, that's what I, kind of what I mean. Okay, Sands is also included in that. Um, think about, and then ask yourself the following question. Where would, do you think the trust, and because I use that word very, very deliberately, trust in authority, in the values, and the ability to keep transmitting those values. My thesis is as follows. It's very simple. The reason that the Satma Rebbe, the Klosenberger Rebbe, Rabbi Vosna, responded and laid down the halacha, certainly for their groups, differed from the Chofetz Chaim. And the reason that Rav Soloveitchik, and if we go back and read, because I did, we, we read a piece from him before, I think it's very telling the words that are used in his name. I think it, what it boils down to is as follows. In a society, in a subculture where there is a very high trust value, right? Mm -hmm. So in somewhere like Satma or thing, the concept of authority, the Hasidah Shereba, the, the, now, yeah, let's leave aside those that drop out of the, that's a different thing. But those that are within, the, the notion of centrality of authority um, and trust in that, and the the willingness to follow something quite unquestioningly, that quality is extremely high in those. It is less so in the middle, and even less so in the left. And therefore it could be that if you belong, for example, to the, the modern Orthodox world, it's not going to be, and perhaps, perhaps it could be argued, you're going to have to do more. You're going to have to work harder to win the trust of the women folk. Mm. That doesn't make it either good or bad. And that's another whole, okay. I, I don't want to be drawn into value judgments, but I'm just trying to understand it. It, it. it occurred to me as I was trying to understand this a little bit that although of course it's a halachic, um, it's a halachic argument, but the halachic argument is based on an understanding of the reality. Everybody agrees. Look, this is why you're allowed to do this. You, uh, be, um, give a health warning. You can't do this very often. Because usually, can't do what, right? you can't do this analysis that we're doing here. You can't use this very often. I'll tell you why you, I think you can. It's legitimate to do it in this case. Because the Paiskim all agree. There's a Seif and Shulchan Aruch, there's a Rambam, there's a Gemara. It's also to teach your daughter Torah. It's Tamalam Tiflus. 
they all agree that we have to do it nowadays. Mm. So the question is, they are responding to a need. It's it's an ace last ace last M. It's not that, and this I want to make this. I want, I'm going to say something. I'm going to be a bit sharper now. It doesn't matter how emancipated or modern orthodox you are. If somebody says to you, well, it's changed because we've moved on. And actually, like, if it's just a reflection of progressive liberal values in society, where until the 1920s, women didn't have the vote. Until 18, whatever it was, they were just chattel of their husbands. They weren't even an entity in their own right. And Tyra, thank God, we finally brought Tyra kicking and screaming into the 21st century. You threw it overboard. And we've thrown it overboard. And thankfully, we have managed now, thankfully, a few rabbis have actually woken up and realized we have to teach women the same because they are the same. Da, da, da. If that's the, the approach, it is plain and simple wrong. Wrong. Russell of H would not support that. Nobody would support that. And if they do, it's not an orthodox viewpoint. Let's be very clear about that. It's really important to realize if somebody d comes from the perspective and, and is saying, thankfully, Tyra has finally been brought become progressive as it always ought to have been, which is to treat women as, um, if, it's, if it's part of this broader societal move, to treat women as absolutely equal in every area and give them every opportunity, that is simply incorrect. That is wrong. And we're going to do some more work when you come back on this other topic, which is women being rabbis, etc., etc., and And that relates to that. But I want to be crystal clear there is no justification for that at all. Not in, in not in Rav Salavechik, not in Rav, Rav Shamshul Fuel Hirsch, not in the Chavetz Chaim, not in any of the classic sources. Okay, let's be really clear about that. And there are organizations not a million miles away from here. <laughs> I won't say more. Where that is exactly what they're doing. It's a bit subtle, but it is not orthodox. It, it's, it's not a, a, this is not a comment on people who may be very nice and very good and very kind and amazing people but it ain't orthodox and we need to know that that's what that's why we learn tyra we learn the sources to educate ourselves however what i think is legitimate and i think does make a lot of sense is once you have created let's say in the more modern orthodox world a yeshiva university type world then you're going to have to work harder you've set the bar harder you've set the bar higher and therefore you are going to have to work harder to gain the trust, the respect, the appreciation for Torah. And maybe for that, maybe you have to give them Gemara classes. Maybe. I mean, you could then argue, well, maybe you oughtn't to have done that in the first place. But it could be it's too late. The horse has bolted. The, you know, there's no point closing the stable door now. And if we go back and we read what Rav Soloveitchik actually wrote, that is what he said. But I'm he not... Was, I'm not... It, no? You're correct. Bottom of page four. And look at the language. He says, look at the first underlined bit. <coughs> Hayoim bitkufa shanoshim shavois lenoshim hein ba academia hein bimadiniyut. They they are absolutely equal. This is the world, you know. If you live in a twenty first century secular liberal progressive world, and that's the world you operate in, vahanoshim lo yaskimu lehisnahig lefiha Torah. They will not agree. These are the words. They won't agree to follow Torah ideas. If they will not, it's trust. If they do not see black on white, the ktsais, the or the depth and the the mikra ubi gemara, if they don't see that, they won't agree. That means the trust levels are very low. So he was talking for his for that oilam, <coughs> then that's what you have to do. In the Yeshimsha world, you don't need to go that far because there is still a, 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 I would argue, a residual, there is still trust. We have a system, you can call them G'daylim, whatever you want to, it's not quite like Hasidah Sherebas, but there is, uh, whatever, there's, there is that concept. So there is trust. It's just a question of then and, and making our girls and, and, and wives enthusiastic and passionate about her. In order to do that, You've got to, there's two ways of doing it nowadays. Uh, it's interesting, I'm giving a parish this year at the moment for women, which I've started doing, and I'm deliberately making it more textual. Um, and I had a, I knew I was doing okay because a certain a woman came up to me afterwards and said, she said, I've needed this for quite a long time. She says, there's plenty fluffy, warm, nice uh, shiurim out there, but I wanted something that was a little bit more solid and textual and to see it in the posuk and to show the, and that was exactly, that was exactly, that's exactly the idea. 
So that's what we have to do. Tell them a meshachachma, a maharal, a rib tzodek. Uh, you don't need to do a kutsois and a nasivas and a chazanish to get that. But because there is already a residual trust level in the, in the, in the, in the satma world, the trust level is much higher. You, you, need, you only need to do less. That is my thesis. It's my analysis of the understanding. Uh, so they're actually all, in other words, what would the satma rebbe potentially, is my question, what would he say for our oilam? He might have said the same thing. He was speaking for his oilam. And that's, a li- um, I hope I'm not wrong, Shagisi and Shachapar Hashembadi, but I think it makes sense. Do you, do you hear what I'm, my analysis of it? Yes. So, pardon my chutzpah. Go for it. But uh, what's the exact difference between saying, oh, the times have changed. Yes. And we try to make Torah work for the time that changed. Yes. And saying, the trust has changed and women require more of this and that. That's a very good point. In essence, there might be not, no difference. It's similar. And we, it is similar and we need, we, we're not there yet. I did say to you, we need to do more Hagdara and uh, we won't get, we're not going to get to it today, but there is more Hagdara. Let me throw out two ideas for you, just because I don't want to leave you hanging because I know I've learned from bitter experience. Um, two ideas. <laughs> there is one possibility, as we're going to see in some of the Achreinim, it could be the Chofetz Chaim and the Sat Rebbe and others are arguing on what is considered Torah Shabich Sav and what is considered Torah Shabal mm. It could be one analysis might be, and we're going to see in some of the Achreinim, that to learn a Rashi and a Ramban on a Posuk and a Meshech on a Posuk is included in a proper understanding of Torah Shabich Sav. That's one possible way around it. Right, but I thought... At first hand, I thought maybe it's, let's say, like an Yerushalayim issue and so on and so on. But then, like Rav Silovich, as he's quoted, yeah. it says that the women are not ready to follow Torah if they don't do the so meaning. This is his analysis. Courses, they will just, what, go off or what? Uh, well, if... Sounds like that. This is what he's saying. Right. I mean, he's speaking for, presumably, for the crowd that he was working with. And that was his analysis of that of that crowd that unless you give them access to an understanding they need to understand it mm. we do stuff that we understand um and therefore they need to have that understanding needs to be quite deep um and for him therefore it needs to be gomorrah as well um whereas one way and like i say one possible understanding of the Chafetz Chaim is that this is all included in Torah Shabbat one possibility. And the argument, let's say, between him and the Klosenberger or the, the Satmarov would be about what is considered Tosh or not. Mm-hmm. And another possible way of looking at it that this is, we're doing this, we're doing the male thing, aren't we? We're analyzing, we're giving that the Hagdara is that, um, and this is really opens up another whole topic, which we can't do, certainly not now. There's a concept called a Dovash of Minion, which means that when Chazal forbade something and they gave a reason, depending mm-hmm. on the type of legislation, Moran Beit, Sadaf, Hay, etc. Dovash of Minyan. Sometimes we say that even though the reason has gone, you still need a base in God only men of the to overturn it. And it could be that this it was not a Dovash of Minyan. And what the Chavetz Chaim is saying is the Chazal did not legislate, would never have legislated for our generation. It was not included in the Gezerah. And this is not a crazy thing. Toysavus and Avedo I happened to have learned it quite recently. It shouldn't sound like a Talmud Chacham. Chas I happened to have... Uh, uh, that was a joke. Never mind. I, I, uh, I happened to have learned it quite recently. There's a Rabbeinu Tam um, in Avedo Zara and the Beis Yosef brings it. We have a clapping on Shabbos and other things. It's a Gabi cheese, Gvina Sakum, etc. Where Rabbeinu Tam takes the view and says, Mayim Magulim, Nechoshim. In a place where there was never Nechoshim, then Chazal will never geyser on Mayim Mugulim. So apply, and that's not called Abba Shabbat Minyan. That's fine. Because they were never geyser on that reality. And the Chavetz Chaim, with all of his Das Torah, is saying he is utterly convinced that Chazal never, they, ne- they did not mean that it would be Osa in such a day. They would never have said such a thing. That's Tosfos. That's Tosfos. Chav- and I'm saying the, the Chavetz Chaim, this is possibly so maybe, yeah. an analysis of this is what the, what the Chavetz Chaim is saying. Because the Chavetz Chaim is not uprooting a Sif and Shulchan Aruch. He would never do that. Right. And what he's saying is, 
We've, we've, the reality has changed and Chazal were never gozer on that reality, like Rabbi Tam says about the Nechoshim. Same sort of thing. That's one possible Londish way of looking at it. The other one would be to, to, to say that it's all included in Torah Shabbat right. Either way, I think we've given it a little bit more analysis. Let's go, let's see a, a few more sources this morning. Um, um, let, we, saw, we saw Rav Hirsch. Let's move on. The next thing I want to see is uh, interesting. Um, Rav Zalman Sarotskin. Yeah, the Lutzkarov, page seven. Page seven. He wrote, that's, it's a longer piece. I don't, we're just going to skim through some bits of it. Right, so have a look. This is written, look at the date of this letter also. It's 1941. Yes? He's writing this to Rabzam uh, uh, Sarotskin, one of the very... Uh, important Rosh Yeshivas, and he was the Rav in Lutz. He wrote uh, um, Oznaim Latoyro. You may have seen it, may have used it sometimes. Um, and he writes to uh, somebody who is Oisak Ishchai Varav Olim Al Stei Chinuch Ben Oisi Yisrael. I don't know who this person is. In Tel Aviv, 1941. Gives you some context. And his... Let's go through the bits that are underlined. Lemaisa Belimud Hatoyro Sheba'al Peh Be'iyun the idea, the question of teaching women that requires further thought. He's not prepared to commit. But that's not relevant. They don't learn they don't learn Torah Shabbat they don't learn Tosos and Marshon or B'Kiv and Ketzos. Val Torah Shabbat ain shum pickbook. On Torah Shemich Sav, there's absolutely no problem whatsoever. Ubifrat b'doir tahapuchos zeh, especially this topsy turvy doir. V'rak b'toir shabal pe bi'ino b'pilpul amru chazal chal malam das b'toir Torah kilam malam to tiflos. Avol Torah Shemich Sav, halikva hoichiach hataz. He brings here a beautiful the taz. We haven't seen this inside yet. The taz proves from mitzvahs akel shafilu shafilu noshim mutores lilmoid. Women are allowed to learn. V'siem shekachu aminig b'chol yoyim says the Taz. This is the minig that women learn every day. Umi ha'odam sheyovre achare ha'melech. He's appropriating a pasuk here. Who would come after the king, meaning the Taz, because his name was David. So it's ha'melech David. No. David. You, know, you have to be sensitive to these things. David said oh, the, the Taz. Umi ha'odam sheyovre achare ha'melech. Eis hashekva asohu leminag Yisrael. So Torah about b'chsav? No problem. What's the problem? The Taz says this in Minag Bechol Yeh. U besifri hadei of hadibur herachti levayer. He says, I wrote in my other a sefer hadei of hadibur. She afilu Torah shebal peh muteres ha'isha lishmoya. Rotzelei melalamid es es hamaskona ha'achreino. Even Torah shebal peh, a woman is allowed to learn the final decision. It's just not the whole cut and thrust, the the halachic melchanta shel Torah. Beloy kishus of perukim, but to know what to do, of course. Is, is important, etc. He basically then goes on and he says that the same thing as the Chofetz Chaim. That uh, he said, because if we would not do it nowadays, she would be almost like a, a, a goisha girl. Look at what he says, the next paragraph towards the end. It's quite, uh, it's quite shocking. Um, halfway through the next paragraph, which starts with the it is impossible to teach the Torah in Jewish houses. There are many houses where there is no Yiddishkeit is gone. A girl who comes from one of these uh, um, uh, houses, uh, families, and wants to learn in a, in a religious school, she's almost kenochris. Shebal his gayer shemin a hechrich lelam da Torah we we have to teach a Torah they should Torah said delech I should telech but umotzino now here he says something now he says a chiddush and this I'm going to I'm hoping that you're gonna either ask me a question or reference something this will test your memories okay here we go umotzino shegam ba Torah shel chizki alam do es anoshim Torah the Gemara says in the Sanhedrin and we looked at this already that in the generation of chizkia the women knew. Tumantara. Remember the Gemara says? No atzcherem, because Chizkiah no atzcherem al Pesach Beis HaMedrash. 
Chizkia stuck a sword by the entrance of the base of and said, Call me Sheena Isaac Batura, you docker Bacherev. Anybody who doesn't learn Torah will get hit with this sword. Bod kumi don bad ber shema vale motsu amo oretz. Migvas vad antifras vale motsu tinek tinoikis ish ve isha. Shaloi hoyu bikina behilchus betuma vetara. Sanhedrin daf tzadi dalet. Vaha marsha kosa beshem rashi. Yeshaya. Shahoyu noshim bekios af be isa veheta. Vakosha, Frank, the Rimsalman Sorovskin, Frank, Frank, the Lutzkerov, Eich Lomdu, Olimdu, Lomdu, Eshanoshim Taira. How could they learn Taira? Or how could they teach them Taira? What was the heta? Ulefid Varenu Nicha. He said on the basis of our previous analysis, it's okay. Shahoisa Hashoot Sricha Lekach. It was special times, it was extraordinary times, and it required. An extraordinary losing. Ki hamelech ochos oviv shal chizkia bitelas avoda v'chosem es atayra. The Gemara says the father of chizkia was a terrible rasha ochas. He basically stopped people learning. Ulefichach nikro shmei ochas shochas botik nisias and he says imen gidi imen joshim ve'elach hashor kosher geisur shor da 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 Emergency measures for an emergency time. Al yidei limud atayra umipnei shachaz okaris hoamuna milibos bnei Yisrael chizkiyah over the next column chizkiyah had no choice but to teach everybody. Now memory test for you. Does it ring any bells? Okie dokie. The maharil. We saw the maharil on page two. The maharil. On this Gemara learns differently. Do you remember what the Maril said? The Maril uses this Gemara as a Makoir to say, how did they know Tum of Atara? So Rav Zalmasarotskin understands. They sat and learnt it in great depth. <laughs> Aye, how could they do it? <laughs> the Maril is a Rishon. The Maril said, no, that's not Pshat in the Gemara. They were living it. Exactly, very good. Exactly. So it's just pointing out there's a machlekas here. Just pointing it out. Okay. And says, he, he goes on to say, um, he says, look where's the little hand there. Mm -hmm. It's very, he, he was, he had a way with words. He was very poetic and oratorical and lyrical. Mm -hmm. He writes in 1941 when the seculars, the secular Jews are using Ochoz, the ways of Ochoz, we take the opposite. You can see that's an oratorical flourish. Yes? They are taking the way of Ochoz, we take the way of Chizkiah. Lechazek es Yisrael, five minutes if you don't mind, I'm nearly finished. Thank you. Oleinu lechazek es Yisrael aviyem sheba shamayim alidei limud ha-tayra. Bein la-anoshim, bein la-noshim, bein la-tinik, bein la-tinoikas. U b'sha asho emuna refuya, at a time when emuna is so weak, Aleinu, Alehem levakeris alev al hamoyach lifnois mikoidem ala isha hanavoyna. We turn to the wise women and we teach them. And we teach them not about el sora. Sora was megayeris es hanoshim, etc. And he goes on with this and he says, not only, look at the very last paragraph, and we'll have to finish with this for today. Acharei kol eila ni oima shaloi rak mutal alamit toir vi yerashomayim. El chi of gomor yesh bozeh. Chi of Gomorrah, they are you're doing what Sorrow did. But for the detail, remember he said at the beginning, Lim Tersha Bal Per Beyun? No. Sorry? Nishmo. Sorry? Nishmo. Yes. That's right. That's right. But we anyway, we don't we're not teaching them we're not teaching them Tersha Bal Per, we're teaching them Tersha Bhsaf. That's what we're teaching them, and that is an absolute chiyuv. Okay, we'll stop here for today.